Now, don't get me wrong, it is an upgrade, but I was honestly thinking that it would be more of a crit weapon than its predecessor, which is the Vandal. And it does have more crit, but not as much as you would think, which I guess is fine. I'm not, I'm not necessarily that mad at it. I mean, in the world where incarnate weapons exist, all other weapons just kind of become useless. But it is an upgrade. I mean, just a slight, you know, 10 less magazine, everything else. You know, fire it is pretty much the same, but more crit, uh, more crit damage, more status, and you know, a little bit more damage, which you know, whatever, somewhat negligible. Um, and I have been using the Vandal version of it for a long time. Um, I was trying to get it to work with really any kind of build that I could find, and it just doesn't really perform as well as you would think. And that is, I mean, of course, without the corrosive shards. I mean, you know, if you have, you know, the plus four corrosive shards, uh, you know, the two corrosive shards, so, you know, you can get the 14, the 14th corrosive proc, sure. Every weapon is going to be amazing. But I was trying to get it to make it work without it. But after the Nars Reaper, of course, everybody's running corrosive shards on it. And I would have to say, without having corrosive shards uh, on your frame, this weapon is going to be something that you're not really gonna like using because you are gonna run corrosive and cold no matter what progenitor you get if even if you get radiation magnetic or if you get cold if you get like I mean I don't know why you would get like heat or any other single element so you can combine the cold with something I guess if you want to go for that to want to try some wacky elemental combos but of course I went for Magnetic because I actually haven't uh, gotten Magnetic on a lot of the other Tenet weapons that I have. Or even the cool Wolf weapons actually. So I decided to go for that and also because I did want to use the Primary Frostbite so I ended up going for that. Now the only difference I have between this build and the one that I had on my Vandal is probably Galvanized Scope. And it does work. I thought that it was going to be one of those things where with the vermi splicer where you know because this weapon kind of like the vermi splicer and the torrid it chains between enemies you know rather than having like a circle of a beam or something like the beam having like a spherical beam at the end of it where it would like do an area of effect cold damage or whatever with the vandal version or maybe it even exists with the regular version in this one it chains up enemies it links up to, I don't know how many, but a decent amount. You don't have to like count how many enemies it is. It links up to pretty much all of them, I think, uh, as many as there are. And I was really thinking there was going to be something like Wormy Splicer where like it would just start aiming at their chest rather than at their head, which was always my biggest gripe with the Wormy Splicer, but apparently not. It doesn't really do that. You could definitely proc it. And with it procced, I would say all five stacks... You could definitely get to orange crit territory. Now, I am using a ribbon on it uh, for the toxin and crit chance. So, you know, you might have to spend a lot of money or a lot of uh, plat to get this uh, ribbon. Not even this ribbon. It's not even that good. But to get, like, a ribbon, I guess, for the Galaxion. I just happen to have one that I've had for probably, I want to say, the last three four years so you know I guess lucky me and of course chamber aptitude you know goes without saying and then of course vital sense and then I'm running voltage so I can get that corrosive so I don't have to like really you know put anything else and I have started to use speed trigger on it you can use vile acceleration but I am just annoyed by the amount of times you have to reload because the magazine runs out pretty quickly if you have a lot of you know that high of a fire rate but this is what I decided to uh, go with, and uh, yeah, I guess we could just take it and see how it does. Now, having elemental damage on your weapons is definitely something that I have been debating uh, for a little bit. The reason for that is because, well, I usually run in arrows, like not most of the time, but I would say majority of the time. 
uh, and I have like a hound and of course with hounds you know that you can spread like pretty much most of the status effects if you have them on his weapon and then also with manifold bond and I think you can do the same with Dariga so you don't necessarily have to worry about having certain elemental damages on your weapon unless you're using it with other frames and I understand that people use other frames but for me I wasn't looking to really get a lot of elemental damage, a lot of elements on my weapon because I understood that, you know, I was just going to get that with my hound and then of course that galvanized aptitude multiplies that damage to the point where it's uh, going to do an insane amount. Now, the viability of this weapon without the corrosive shard is the one thing that also I haven't necessarily tested it out. I think it still would perform decent. I don't think it will underperform. Now, of course, I have corrosive shards on right now, so these pe the, you know these enemies are really gonna just die very quickly and very easily. And also with you know my hound spreading those status effects and you know being the primer that he is, I'm gonna be able to just kill these guys like they're like you know level 10, even though they're level 180 almost 200 yeah level 180 skill path not that big of a deal now the weapon itself again it's great and it's amazing if you're running a corrosive setup on any of your frames um which you know if you have a sarin or a mesa or i don't know if there are other frames that you have corrosive shards on it is going to be fantastic but I do wonder how it will perform without the corrosive shards because you know if you don't have a prime if you don't have the hound if you don't have the Dariga priming these enemies with these status effects which you are definitely going to need so that this weapon can do an insane amount of damage I mean let's be honest uh, if you don't have that kind of companion primer, I don't know if it is something that most people will use and really, you know, really can reach the damage potential of this weapon. But I think at this point, I think most players have figured out a way to, you know, do that. I think most people are using the Dorita at this point. Most people do have a hound, or most people, you know, have like a Panzer Broker Phyla, which, you know, that, you know, if you're not running viral on it, you can get viral from that. That's another way to get viral on this weapon if you want to. You can run hunting munitions set up, but honestly, viral and hunting munitions, I just genuinely do not like using that kind of setup. You could probably put, uh, you know, hunting munitions on it. And then have viral from a Panzer Lopophila or with something else, but I'd rather just go uh, with this. Now again, I am using corrosive shards here, so you might not see the same damage that you're seeing here if you don't have corrosive shards on your Warframe. But I think most people know that by now, so I don't really have to make that disclaimer. But you might not see the same damage uh, without it. And honestly, at this point, it's just like, a, you know, it's almost a necessity these days. If you want to run a corrosive setup on any frame, you kind of have to have those corrosive shards. So you can really just fully strip the armor. And then it just, you know, it, then after, after stripping the armor of the enemy, you know, damage becomes trivial because... You know it's pretty much nothing so again with the corrosive shards it's fantastic I think without it it's still pretty decent as long as you have either a decent like probably like four uh, at least four uh, different uh, elements on your Galaxian itself or you have like a Dariga or something like a uh, Hound so you can really spread those status effects and you can just come in and shoot the thing if I fucking can, Jesus. Oh my god, this guy is annoying. And he just took the armor for me. Great, well, cool. That is an annoying thing, though. That fucking mod, even though I like it because it does add magnetic 
to your hound's, uh, you know, synergized prospectus. But that little globe always ends up fucking me up. I mean, it's annoying. Always annoys the fuck out of me, but whatever. But yeah, alright. Well, this guy's gonna be a little bit chunky, sure. It'll take some time, I guess. Oh, Jesus. Uh, alright, let me get out of here real quick. So, all in all, the weapon's great. It performs uh, pretty well. Like, I thought that it was not going to be performing as good as some of the other uh, new i mean i guess not new anymore but some of the newer inc incarnate weapons but it can hold its own but again you have to rely on the corrosive shards which i think most people you know i think it's negligible at this point people i guess most people are running that sort of setup on most of their frames so yeah you know it's a great weapon i would probably recommend it now I gotta get soul back and uh, see what that one is about.